Hello, and welcome to ASMR You Sitting Comfortably. For today's video, I'm going to do a map drawing of the country I'm currently in, which is Wales. As lockdown's eased a bit in the UK, I've come back to visit my family for a couple of weeks. Um, and I thought, this is quieter here than it is in London be a good excuse to do some videos. Um, I'm going to draw the outline of Wales. I'm going to colour it in with some chalk pastels. Um, and then I'm going to name some of the places and some facts about Wales, which will hopefully be a nice, relaxing experience for you and help you get to sleep. Um, I'm going to put the time stamps in the uh, video information just below the video. Um, and. I look forward to hearing what you think in the comments. Um, uh, do subscribe if you like, and thank you to everyone who's watched my videos so far. Okay, so Wales is a funny shape of a country. Um, it would probably be one to do better in portrait and landscape, but it's not so easy for videos on YouTube, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to give myself a couple of points to start off with. Go from there to there. Um, so this is the very North Wales, which connects to the sea there. It's not landlocked up there, although one of Wales' borders is. So up we're here, we are by the northeast corner of Wales. comes out to here, just about, and then we've got a little bit that sticks out. It's kind of a funny bit of Wales here, because I guess there's sort of, a, if I'm right, this is all land connected here, and so there's a sort of, um, almost like an enclave um, of England, surrounded by Wales. We come down here. We come to this little bit, which um, is kind of looks a little bit like um, a dragon's tail. It comes out like that, and then it goes inward. So this another sort of little um, area of land surrounded by whales, and then here we start to go down. In again. Um, I've said before in my videos that I'm not a, an artist or anything, so um, this obviously isn't really to scale. It's quite a rough map. Um, I, I think it will give a good idea of what Wales is like to anyone who doesn't know it particularly. Um, yeah, I'm down here now, we're at the very south. This is sort of, I think, Monmouth Shear around here. And up here, we'll draw it in a bit, is the River Severn, the Severn Estuary. Um, so now we're coming along the south coast of Wales. Um, this little bit here is where Cardiff and Newport are. The south coast is where most of the, most of the people who live in Wales are. It's where the most populous area is. up like this ramp it. so this should be about in line with this point here that's about, about right I think um, I've drawn a couple of tester maps of this and had varying degrees of success and um, I've not drawn a map of the country before mostly I've done sort of well in the videos I've done city ones and when I doodle by myself I mostly draw sort of city maps um, and although this is the country I'm from I really don't know its coastline that well, so um, if you see any mistakes, I'm sorry. Particularly to all the Welsh people out there. <laughs> Probably four Welsh people will end up watching this video, but uh, yeah. So we're getting there. It's, it's beginning to take shape. So in Wales, 
we have two languages that are mainly spoken. Um, uh, Welsh and English. Despite the fact that the language of Wales is Welsh, um, I would say that it's predominantly an English-speaking country. Um, there are first language Welsh speakers. There's people who their mother tongue is Welsh. I think we're getting a bit wide here, actually. Um, so let's start on the top a bit, try and even that out. Um, so there are people whose mother tongue is Welsh. Uh, and there are a few people who speak don't speak much English at all, though that's not probably a very large uh, portion of the population, mostly in mid and north Wales that is. Um, I remember I would stay at a friend of my dad's farm when I was young, my dad, and um, he had someone working on his farm who only spoke Welsh. He spoke a little bit of English, but not, not really much. And that is probably the only person I've met who can't really speak English at all. Um, I know quite a few first language Welsh speakers. There's people who, as I say, know Welsh as their mother tongue. Um, but um, they're definitely, I think they're, a, yeah, they are definitely a minority in the country. Um, and now the reason that we speak English here, um, like many other countries, <laughs> England, England kind of forced Wales to, to speak English for a long period of our history. Well, Welsh was um, forbidden, it was against the law to speak Welsh. Um, and I don't speak Welsh. I went to an English speaking s secondary school, um, but they, you have to learn Welsh even in an English sec even in an English speaking secondary school, but as a second language, and like um, uh, some of the schools which teach Welsh as a first language, um, and Welsh in the language of Welsh is Cymraeg. And as well as that, Wales in Welsh is called. Um, Cymru, Cymru. Sorry, I was hesitating there, not because I didn't know what I was saying, but because this is the, the bit of the map that I normally have a problem with. Um, because it's, it's, it's quite difficult to get the proportion right. And this is what it's called. Obviously, all of this would is the west of Wales, but I think normally when people are talking about West Wales, they're often meaning this section here. This sort of um, penin peninsula. Yeah, so as you can see, um, this bit's a bit more tricky. Um, I'm looking at a reference map while I do this to get this bit right because it's quite a, quite a challenge. I'm going to go down here. Now that's not perfect, but I think it's a decent go. Um, I think it's probably a bit too wide over here. Um, but I think for now that will do. Um, you know, we're not trying to make this uh, uh, a work of art, just to, to give us a better idea of what Wales looks like. I meant to send to the map there, and I obviously didn't do a very good job of that. Yeah, so here, up here, this is North Wales. Around here, we've got Snowdon, Mount Snowdon, the tallest mountain in Wales. The Snowdonia Mas National Park. Here, we've got Mid Wales. I think, uh, counties like Powys, Gwynedd, Gwent are around here. Here, we've got West Wales, Carmarthenshire, Pembrokeshire, I think, uh, west, western counties. And then here, we've got South Wales. Um, famous for its mining. Mm, this is where the capital city is, Cardiff, which is where I am. Um, okay, so we've got a basic outline. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is use these pastels to go around the edge. Um, I'm going to start with this very dark green here. And we're just going to follow the edge of the map all the way around. 
But as we go, we're going to smudge the pastels to give them a nice rendered effect. Um, so I'm going to do a sort of dark green, a little bit of the light green here. And then I'm going to get my finger just drag it inwards. And then we'll add a little bit more of this lighter green here. And we're just going to blend that in. It gives us a nice rendered effect around the edge where the darker green meets the lighter green. Um, smudge that in a little more here. Just make sure those colours meet up. I think actually as I go around, I'll probably do more of this lighter green than this dark one. And maybe go over it in darker green later. Um, so, yeah, here we go around the bit that looks a bit like a dragon's tail. This little bit here. And once we've once we've gone around the edge of it all, I'll probably shave some of the uh, pastel onto the paper. And when I do that, um, that means that I can make sections, uh, colour sections in really easily. I'm not so bothered that these are kind of a different colour because we want there to be some different colours on the map, I think. Makes it look a bit nice. Um, stops it be a feeling too um, two dimensional. Gives it a little bit of lift and just makes it look like a landscape rather than a rather than a, a drawing. So here we go. Go around here. Up here and now we're in North Wales. Over here is Liverpool. Around here somewhere. Uh, we've got the Midlands in England over there. And, um, Liverpool. If there are cities in North Wales, towns in North Wales. They're not as big as um, Cardiff, Newport or Swansea, I don't think. Um, but I think a lot of people treat Liverpool almost as the big city they'll go to if they need to go to a bigger city. And Liverpool is, is bigger than any city in, in Wales, including Cardiff, which is the capital. Um, yeah, that's looking nice. Nice green there. So, I'm just going to do some of the easier to reach bits down by here. Um, so yes, this is Mon Monmouth, this is the borderlands between Wales and England. Very beautiful. Um, it's one of the most beautiful train rides, actually. It's uh, a Wales to Liverpool train, the Cardiff to Liverpool train, sorry. It goes all the way through here. Um, and they once went on it sort of 6am when the sun was coming up and it was so beautiful we've got a lot of railroad in the UK and um, there are a lot of smaller more isolated communities around um, Wales so they're linked by train um, and it's a very beautiful country Wales very beautiful it's known for being beautiful um, known for being very picturesque it's got lots of valleys and hills. It does have um, Snowdon. Um, I can't remember what height Snowdon is. I'll, I'll look it up before the end of the video. But it's a, um, a pretty, fairly tall mountain by Britain standards. It's bigger than anything in England, but not bigger than many in Scotland. Um, but Wales is more known for having hills than it is having mountains. So here we go, along the south coast, along an area called the Gower. There's some lovely beaches around here. Yeah, and I mentioned that Welsh is the second, well, not the second language, but Welsh is the, you know, is Welsh and English are the languages spoken in Wales. But of course, Wales has quite a big history and, and because of our successful port in Cardiff in particular um, and our coal industry attracted a lot of people from all over the world 
in so Cardiff in particular, as well as other places across Wales, a lot of different languages are spoken, including um, you know Arabic, um, Punjabi, um, as well as um, in recent times a lot more um, uh, Eastern European languages. So if you live in Cardiff, um, you might well live in quite a diverse place in terms of different ethnicities and nationalities. Uh, so, you know, this is the problem that I have with chalk pastels, is not dra dragging my hand back through them, creating these ugly smudges all around. Um, so I might have to try and use my weak hand now to do this stuff down here. So I'm going to go around it like this, and it kind of doesn't matter if I go a bit over the lines here. I'm going to do some C around the edge as well, some nice blue pastel. I like using pastels, but sometimes you can't find a small enough edge to get the bit that you want to get. Um, and that sometimes means that it's quite difficult to colour inside the lines. Here we go in West Wales. Now West Wales is a really beautiful place, amazing surfing beaches. Um, it's not dissimilar some ways to Cornwall, which is much more known. Um, yeah, um, but people, it's less touristy in West Wales, uh, less of an established tourism industry. There is, of course, because it's very beautiful. There's all sorts of campsites and, you know, hotels and bed and breakfasts. Hotels and bed and breakfasts, but um, look, that's not good there. Oh, well. Um, yeah, and beautiful beaches and yeah, good places to surf, but it, it's a little less known, I think, because if you think about the map of England, um, if you live in the east of England, coming all the way to West Wales is quite a way away. Cornwall's quite far as well. But yeah, in Cornwall, they also have their own language uh, that's um, on the brink of dying out, actually, I think. And it's called, unsurprisingly called Cornish. And uh, Cornish isn't that dissimilar from Wales. Both of them are very old Celtic languages. And sometimes um, I was in a Cornish pub before um, with a friend of my parents who is a Welsh speaker, fluent Welsh speaker. And there was a Cornish written over the um, over the, one of the beams in the pub. And uh, she couldn't speak Cornish, but because she could speak Welsh, she could translate um, a good deal of it. So I'm working with a slightly updated setup today, which is nice. Um, got myself some bits and bobs just to make everything a little clearer and a little better looking. There will inevitably be some teething problems, but as I get used to this setup, I hope the quality of my videos will improve. I wasn't very happy with the quality of my mudlarking video. Um, the black background didn't work so well with the camera. And I couldn't get enough quiet in the house. And, um, I wasn't speaking into the microphone enough, which is something I'm still getting used to. So I invested in some bits and bobs. I got myself a, a pop guard for my microphone so that I can speak a little louder sometimes without fear that... and whisper a little closer to it without fear that um, that it's going to pop. The, 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 the blowing sound will disrupt the microphone. So that's good. I also bought um, a flexible stand to use my phone instead of the camcorder I was using. The camcorder I was using is, is a good camcorder, but it, it's not quite right for what I want to do. Uh, it doesn't give a vibrant enough picture, um, which is kind of what you want, I think, if you're doing things where people are going to be looking at something for a long time, one frame for a long time. You want it to look really nice so they have something nice to look at. So there we go. That's looking nice now, I think. So we just want to get a nice light green background across here. So to do that, I've just scraped some of the pastel onto here. And the reason for that is, if I just drew it on, you get the mark of where the line is drawn. And it'd be harder to render large spaces without seeing where I've drawn the mark. So, using this, 
I can colour in large areas nice and lightly and evenly without having to um, create pe uh, drawing lines. But it's looking nice, I think. Um, I quite like it being a bit rough and wavy. You know. Again, just to add texture, just to make, make it clear that it's a landscape. So now we've got that outline of Wales. It's looking nice, coloured in. Okay, so before I get on with some more shading, uh, where I shade the mountains and the um, some of the things like that, um, I realise I omitted one important feature. Um, I'm not actually doing this from a reference map, but this is the island of Anglesey, part of Wales. Um, I can't fit it all in, um, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry to the people of Anglesey. <laughs> um, it kind of goes up like that there, I think, and then it goes all along here. But, um, yeah, Anglesey will have to forgive me for forgetting them and for um, sort of roughly approximating what the island looks like. But that will do for now. So you can see them here are my pastels, lots of lovely colours. Um, I think I'm going to use very pale yellow for the first base colour. Um, um, so first we're going to do the mountains right at the top here. This range here, which is um, Snowdonia. Um, is where Mount Snowdon is, which is just there. Um, Mount Snowdon is the tallest mountain in Wales and England, as I said before. And then we've got another little vein of mountains just about here. Um, these are just the base colours I'm putting in for and this, this strip kind of joins up with these other ones here. And uh, I think these are called the Cambrian Mountains, the Cambrian Range, maybe. Like many people in South Wales, I haven't been to North Wales much. I've been a couple of times at Snowdon, Snowdonia, and I've, I've been to Mid Wales, as I said before, when I was young. They're not hugely, North Wales more so than mid, mid Wales, but they're not hugely populous areas. Um, there are obviously people who live there, but, um, so there we go, that's a nice base coat for our mountains. Um, and then we're going to go a little bit darker on top of that. rub that in, blend that in with the colour we did before. This way we're just beginning to layer up um, uh, the raised areas. Down here as well we have the valleys, Brecon Beacons, um, also a national park, a really beautiful national park, not far from Cardiff, short drive. So now I've done that, it's time to get a bit more, a bit darker with these colours. So this is going to be the main colour that we use them to show some of the height of the ranges. Um, as well as doing a strip through the middle and also just highlighting bits of the edges. Of course in a real map when they do this it actually ties in exactly to the um, topography. But this is more of a, a vague assumption. So 
So Wales isn't very big in terms of its population. I think it's about three million. The smallest of England, Scotland and Wales. And um, I'm not sure about Northern Ireland, actually, but certainly of, of um, mainland, the three mainland countries. Okay, now well, we've done that. It's time to get a little darker. Put a bit more colour on, I think, now, because we really want them to stand out. And then in the middle here, just give that a rub. And up here. And across over into Snowdon. Right, so it's beginning to look good there. Okay, so our range is beginning to take shape, but now to show the, the tallest bits, we need to get some red in there. So, this is where it really starts to look more like a map. And what I'm just doing here is just going at top across the ridge of the range, and then just pulling it to the side like this. So, so you can kind of see how the range might look. Again, I'm just sort of half making this up. But yeah, that's beginning to look more, more uh, 3D, more like a land than a, a 2D map. The way the Wales is governed is that it is devolved. It has devolved powers from central UK government in the Westminster. This means that areas like health and education are governed in Cardiff by the Welsh government for the Welsh people. Um, other areas aren't devolved. So, for example, I don't think the army is devolved. I think defence spending is, is taken care of by Westminster. And uh, yeah, they give out a budget and then that budget forms um, that budget forms uh, you know Wales's budget for the year um, I think it's yeah um, the, yeah so cult culture is also a devolved area uh, so theatres and things like that and, um, uh, art, the arts generally and, um, some people might know and have seen parts of Cardiff if you watch uh, shows like Doctor Who um, and lots of other BBC dramas uh, filmed in Cardiff. And, um, this Netflix program, Sex Education, is filmed yeah, um, towards Brecon, just outside of Cardiff, as well. I think it costs less to film here, and um, also, you know, we're very near mountains, very near seaside, very near, near countryside. So you can get a sort of range of terrains without. Uh, having to deal with getting in and out of a city like London um, to film in. Uh, just had some technical issues there, uh, but I'm back now. These mountains here are really important because this is where a lot of coal mining in Wales happened. At one point, Cardiff, South Wales, one of the richest areas in the world, um, due to the coal that it exported across the world. The coal would be taken down via a canal. The parts of it are still visible, a man-made canal, from the valleys down to the port of Cardiff. And then it would be shipped out from there uh, to the west, uh, to England, and all across the world. Um, yes, yeah, so that's very important. It's a bit more green up there. Right, so we've got some of our red in there. And we're just going to do some more little details, dots with a slightly different red, just to make these mountains stand out. Just roughing up the texture, just making it look a bit more mountainous. I also found it quite useful when I did my first one, just to get for the bigger peaks, just right on the edge, just to dot a little bit of purple in. Um, I haven't used pastels since I was a child. Um, 
I like them. They're quite fun. Do a lot with them. Just got to remember to um, spray your book with hairspray or something um, after you finish using it. Otherwise, um, the, the chalk rubs off onto the page behind. Okay, so our mountains look good here. Um, I was going to draw in some rivers, um, but I'm, I'm running out of space on my memory card. So I'm going to draw some sea around the edge. This is just coming up to sort of Newport and Cardiff around here. Um, they're the biggest, Newport, Car Cardiff and Swansea are the big, biggest cities in Wales. Um, the most populous. As we go past, just label those in. So, this here is Cardiff. Um, this here, I think. I think it's about here. Is Newport, although it's, it's actually much more near the coast, I guess. So, Newport. There's not much space between those two cities. They've almost become one. There is Greenbelt around there, but not a great deal. So um, they are two distinct cities, definitely. But um, the edges of them blur a little bit as you get to an area called St. Melons, which is sort of on the edge of Cardiff and the beginning of Newport. And as we come around here to this sort of covey bit here that I've drawn a bit small, you get to Swansea. Just by Swansea is um, Port Albert, where lots of famous actors come from. Bizarrely, Anthony Hopkins, Michael Sheen, um, Rob Brydon, Gavin and Stacey, and other things. So, yeah, quite a, an illustrious bunch. There's a big power station there, really big, smelly power station, um, which you know if you ever drive to Swansea and pass Port Albert the stinky power station <laughs> yeah just coming around here now to West Wales now West Wales um, one of the interesting things about West Wales is there's a town uh, that I used to visit a lot uh, called St David's uh, named after the patron saint of Wales who is St David or Dewi Sant in Welsh um, and he built a cathedral in that town and any town with a cathedral in, in the UK at least is a city so even though it's um, you know almost a, a large village it has the status of being a city because of its um, because of its cathedral um, that's quite a well-known bit of trivia in the UK um, but nonetheless quite an interesting one if you go there you can go and see um, if, uh, Kind of parade there that I went to when I was young. Um, it was quite fun, but um, yeah, we camped outside and some good pubs in there, and um, it's very picturesque places. And, yeah, it's really nice. Um, yeah, so I'm rushing this a bit now because a technical issue I had before was that uh, the SD card on my phone has run out of space. So I've been filming quite a few videos when I've been back here, so I cleared it up a bit, made a bit more space, but I've only got about 10 minutes of filming left so I don't want to do this all today so that's why I'm taking some liberties but that's okay uh, it looks like it's turning out nicely here I may skip going around with pen as well as I'd intended to but that again is okay um, it's all right to the edge of Wales so we're near Aberystwyth now uh, Aberystwyth uh, is a town on the coast with a good university. Um, that is where my parents met. My parents both English. But they met in Aberystwyth University and moved to Cardiff shortly after. Um, yeah, I think it's still quite a popular university town. I think my parents went there because they wanted to move as far away from their homes as they could. My mum's from Birmingham, and that's. Um, not very near the sea, in fact it's the place in Britain most far away from the sea. Um, so she um, she wanted to leave somewhere 
a bit nearer the sea, I think. My dad lived in London, and it's also quite away from London, Aberystwyth. I mean, without going to Scotland, it's really as far as you can get, I guess. So, yeah, in Wales we have our own government. They meet in a place called the Senedd. Spell S-E-N-E-D-D. Double D in Welsh makes a th sound. Um, and the Senedd just means Senate in Welsh, I think. Um, and it's a beautiful building built for um, for the government. A new building in the development in the area of the bay. Um, which is interesting. A bay in Cardiff. Um, there used to be a place called Tiger Bay. Communities still live around there who used to live there. And Tiger Bay was one, one of the f earliest and largest multicultural communities in certainly in Britain and I think in fact in Europe. Uh, with an amazing history. Uh, hugely interesting from when Cardiff was an affluent port. Um, not so many people really realise. I think I've actually gone into England now. <laughs> um, I was enjoying so much going around my map that uh, this is the border between England all up here and I think I uh, got a bit overzealous talking about Tiger Bay, but that's okay, I don't really mind. Uh, my camera cut out again there, um, I don't really know what's going on with it, I think it's um, really low in storage, but it doesn't, it doesn't say that it is, but it just keeps cutting out. Um, anyway, with that in mind, I'm going to have to finish this fairly quickly. Here we've got the Brecon beacons. Here we've got Snowdonia. It's a great name, Snowdonia, isn't it? <laughs> I love that. I think here we've got the Cambrian Range. There are lots of towns up here that I was going to put in, like Landidno, the Mould, places like that, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it with the, the time restraint I've got now, unfortunately. Um, I think this is right for Pembrokeshire. Pembrokeshire in West Wales, a place steeped in history, the ancient Celtic roots of Wales. Um, you know, uh, sorts of druidic activity and in the hills around here are where the stones for Stonehenge were taken and they believed they were then moved from those ranges all the way down to here by hand which is quite incredible and here you've got the Wel Welsh marches places of famous battles this here is the Severn Estuary here here. Ireland is just over here. So this is the Irish Sea. Right, a bit of an angle there, so my hand right, it's not very neat. Um, yeah, that's angle C, uh, which I don't have the spelling for on me, so I'm not going to attempt it in case I get it wrong. Um, yeah, that's my map of Wales. Um, I had intended to add lots of other bits and pieces to it, uh, but my camera doesn't seem to like me today, so I think it's best if I stop here. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it relaxing. Um, please subscribe below if you've watched it and enjoyed it. Um, and please let anyone else you know who likes ASMR map drawing videos that I exist. <laughs> um, I hope you're well and uh, happy and staying safe 